Hello, crochet friends. I'm Graceface. I am about to kind of destroy a plushie in order to rebuild it and make it better. And this is just part of the designing process. I figured why not bring you guys behind the scenes and let you come along with me on the journey. A pattern I've been working on that I am honestly extremely proud of and cannot wait to bring to you guys is for a plushie for Greg from Over the Garden Wall. Here is Greg. He's super cute. It turned out really well and I'm very, very proud. The only problem is the reinforcement on the legs. When you make this guy with blanket yarn, as you can see here, he turns out pretty large. His legs, they're tiny little stick legs. The first Greg that I made, I put absolutely no support in his tiny little stick legs. He immediately buckles under the weight of the plushie. I had a few updates and improvements that I wanted to make to the design, so I made a V2, and that is this guy right here. Knowing that this version of Greg would need some form of support in the legs, I decided to go with products I already had on hand and went with pool noodle pieces and wire. I am sad to say that is still not enough support for Greg and I should have just gone with dowels in the first place, which I knew would work. But to me, that's part of the fun of experimentation is I knew dowels would work, but they would be really stiff. And I was hopeful that a softer product would be functional and not so hard. Knowing that my little boy Greg here still does not have enough stability in his legs to stand up on his own, I could choose to just make it with dowels in future versions, but I believe that I can fix this Greg and add dowels to him. It just is going to require us doing some plushy surgery. I know it's possible, but I haven't done this. We're gonna do it together. All we need to do is take off Greg's head, pull out all of his guts. <laughs> this sounds so violent. Take the head off, pull out all of his stuffing, take out his current leg supports, replace them with dowels, restuff him, reattach his head. Seems straightforward. Hopefully it will be as easy as it sounds. <laughs> it's probably gonna be a little more complicated getting him stuffed again once I got the dowels back in place and he's all together. Since I was stuffing as I went, I'm hopeful that restuffing him will work out just fine and that we won't get any lumps or gaps. So now all I have to do is actually do this. <laughs> and it's a lot easier to say than it is to commit to doing. What we're gonna have to do to proceed is find the thread that we used to attach his head and cut just that so that we don't damage the rest of the plushie. And that's gonna be the trickiest part. I believe we can handle this though. I sewed his head on, I'm pretty sure with a white thread with the tail that was left over from his body. Let's take a closer look and get started. If I pull back against the stitches, I can see where the white thread is going up into the head from the body. And that is where we want to cut when we're disassembling a plushie, but we don't want to destroy any of the current stitches. My little scissors here are quite sharp. So once I find this and start cutting, I know it's over. I know it's so <laughs> and there's no backsies. I feel pretty confident that I can see the stitches I need to cut. I think if I just cut one, it should start to unravel and then we can pull out the remaining stitches. Ironically, I have my cute little stork shears that we're going to use to cut Greg. Feels appropriate. I'm still nervous though. <laughs> this plushie is a lot of work and I don't want to fuck him up. I'm gonna get a sewing needle that I can wedge underneath it to make sure I don't nick anything else when I cut. Okay, I have my trusty sewing needle here that is bent from use and I'm gonna try to wedge that underneath the stitch. I know the starting point is somewhere around here, so if we can cut right around here, I believe we should be able to get the thread we need close to the source. I can see this stitch quite clearly. <sighs> Even though I feel like really confident that this is the correct place to cut, I'm still nervous. All right, we just gotta go for it. You just, we just gotta go for it. I did it, you guys. I cut the correct stitch. I just need to go through and pick all of the stitches out because we did manage to cut in the correct place. We can all breathe a sigh of relief. Oh. Nearly headless. Nearly headless. <laughs> Poor Greg. 
We're gonna get Greg to be a part of the headless hunt, don't worry. I got to work picking out all the stitches really carefully just to make sure that I didn't pull out anything or cut anything I wasn't supposed to. And I was able to eventually free his head from the confines of his body. His head is off and we are ready to proceed. Just this part alone is meaty and hefty. His head's almost the size of mine. Like he's, it's a big plush. It needs support. For those who are interested in making Greg, but are concerned that their plush will turn out this big, you can make it with a different type of yarn and it will turn out smaller. This is Greg made with Premier Basic Chenille, but if you use a smaller gauge yarn, he will turn out smaller. Now what we need to do is take all of the stuffing out and remove the support for the legs and then we can start to rebuild. Oof. So much guts in here. <sighs> that is a heckin large pile of polyfill right there. His little deflated body. All the tails hanging out from the top now. Inside we have supports. Here are the little supports I built peeking out. I thought this would make him stable, but yet still squishy. I feel like it's a good idea. It just didn't work out. For a smaller plushie, perhaps, but for blanket yarn, Greg, these are three eighths inch. I got my two dowels, my drumsticks. There's still stuffing in his feet. I have a dowel down in each leg. And I believe once he's stuffed, the dowels will be hidden. I hope so because it's not like I have a wood saw laying around. You'll wanna always re-fluff your stuffing if you're doing something like this, if you're taking stuffing out of something else to put into a new item. As you can see, all the stuffing is clumped up. So you'll wanna floof it before you shove it back in place. I'm going to kind of wrap this around my dowel and then put it back down into his leg. That was a pretty effective strategy. And I'm just going to stuff more stuffing around his leg around this dowel. Just kind of squeezing his leg around as I'm doing it to make sure that the stuffing is even and not lumpy and that there's not gaps in the stuffing. Sweet, that seems to have worked. I do believe once he's standing back up here and stuffed, these dowels will be parallel with his neck. It looks like the dowels are going to work out at their current size and I don't need to cut them, which is good. As I said before, <laughs> I don't have a saw. I'm going to try that same trick with this other dowel and just kind of wrap a little bit of the stuffing around the, the dowel before I shove it down in here. This strategy is working out. I've almost got his little stocking legs filled back up. Hi, Simon. Yeah. I know, I'm busy right now. <laughs> I know, buddy. I'm just gonna keep going with this process and keep on stuffing. I just kept going, faithfully fluffing my polyfill and then stuffing it back down into Greg's body. And I'm really pleased to know that stuffing as you go isn't detrimental to the process and making sure that Greg's body is stuffed fully. I was quite concerned, as I'd mentioned earlier in the video, that this wasn't going to work out very well due to not being able to stuff as I went and ensure that I was getting all of the polyfill down into all of those nooks and crannies of his body. Fortunately, it worked out super well to do it this way and it wasn't a huge problem. I think just due to the shape of his legs and body, with his legs being pretty skinny and then his body being pretty wide, it's not too hard to get your hands down in there and distribute the stuffing evenly where you need it to be. Overall, I am super, super stoked to know that this is an effective technique to use if I ever need to do surgery again. Okay, friends, I did it. We've got his body restuffed with dowels in his legs. And I am happy to say that the dowels are the correct size and that it does seem like they are lined up perfectly to support all of the weight that's going to come in from his head and his teapot. I'm feeling confident about this. The surgery is working out well. I think the patient is going to make a full recovery. Now the trick will be to take his head and reattach it properly to his body. I'll take a couple of these smaller dowels and use them to help me line up his head into the appropriate place and hold it while I sew. He's standing and his legs aren't collapsing. He's standing. Okay, this is good. It's going to work. I should have done this to start 
Let's not second guess ourselves. Let's not get negative. It's working. I'm proud of myself for coming up with a solution that actually worked and for successfully engineering it to make it happen. Now what I need to do is get some white blanket yarn and we'll sew this guy back on. I conveniently have my white blanket yarn right here so we don't even have to go anywhere to get started. What I'm going to do is line this up to the most critical part which would be the front and make sure the front is appropriate. We'll sew across the front and make our way around the back. That way we can ensure that his face is centered and his head is straight. I have some supports in place, but that's not a, a fail safe and it's not going to stop me from making mistakes entirely. I'm going to move my microphone out of the way. We'll go into a time lapse mode for this. This process is a lot more difficult the second time around with the teapot already attached. When I make Greg initially, I have you sew the head to the body and then sew the teapot to the top of the head. It's a lot easier to construct him that way. So this was definitely more of a challenge. He is so top heavy with that teapot on top. It was really hard for me to ensure that his head was lined up straight. In the moment, I thought I had done a perfect job. In retrospect, looking at Greg and looking back at the footage, his head is just ever so slightly tilted, but honestly, I do not care. I think it turned out really well. I am so proud to say that the operation was a complete success. The patient has made it through with flying colors. He is better than ever. He's standing. His legs are not crushing. This is a night and day difference. I love my perfect son. This was the final thing that I needed to make sure was functional before I could finish up the pattern and get it out to everyone. Now all I have to do is actually finish editing the pattern, getting it all ready to go so that I can do a tester call. <laughs> I'm so happy. <laughs> You're perfect, baby. My little son. I'm super, super proud of this design and this pattern. My plushy surgery skills. <laughs> he looks great. I am super stoked. You guys look out for that tester call and then shortly thereafter you will be seeing this video tutorial dropping on my YouTube channel. I'm going to go get to work on the rest of this pattern and I'll see you guys later. If you enjoyed watching me perform plushy surgery on Greg, think about giving the video a like and maybe subscribing so that you don't miss any future crochet content. I upload every other Wednesday and I love to make new crochet friends. Speaking of crochet friends, follow me on social media. You can find me all over the internet at Graceface Creates. Thanks again for watching and happy crocheting.